Okay, let's start. Uh, first of all, uh, welcome to this information session about the Masters of the Faculty of Informatics of Barcelona. Uh, welcome everybody to those here face to face and those following online. My name is Oscar Romero. I'm the Vice Dean of, of Postgraduate Studies, so I'm taking care of all the Masters at the Faculty. Um, I'm myself a lecturer at the Master level in some of the Masters. So today's objective is basically to present the masters, but before that, let me just uh, recall a couple of things to those online especially. We are going to re uh, record this session because then later it will be available online. So you can follow again the presentation in case you want to clarify any aspect. So then please be aware that if you participate, especially at the end when we will have the answer uh, questions and answers uh, part, if you participate, you may be recorded, okay? Your name may appear in the record, okay? Also, for those online, uh, we will disable the chat now and we will activate it at the end. So you can write your questions there or activate your mic and pose the question as you prefer, okay? So, well, let's start. Um, today is a generic presentation about the masters. Um, basically, I will give a, a pass about uh, most of the questions that we get uh, about our masters, basically about the faculty itself, who we are, and then our main masters. We have four main masters in the faculty, the, ma the master in, in engineering informatics, the, the MIDI master, which is in innovation and research, the master of data science, and the master on artificial intelligence, okay? But I will also talk about uh, three other masters that uh, we also take care of that are either international masters that I will introduce later or habilitant masters. So other questions and things that we will cover in this presentation are the prices and specific things related to additional services that the faculty provide, right? So for example, internships, how they work here. Is it possible to work and study at the same time? I can advance the answer is yes, okay, but uh, we will see how. Then mobility and internationalization in case you want to do a mobility during especially the second year or the third semester, depending on the master and grants and aids. So another specific uh, action that is relevant for our masters is the research and innovation aspect of them all. And finally, services and social life that the faculty provides to all of you as uh, students, okay? I end up with uh, short, uh, frequently asked questions, but then we will open the floor for any question you may have. So let's just start with the faculty, right? So the Faculty of Informatica Barcelona belongs to uh, UPC. UPC is a public higher education uh, institution, highly focused on research, right? Um, right now, we have more than 6,000 uh, bachelor students and, uh, and master students and more than 500 PhD students. So I would like to, to stress the research aspects in this faculty because basically this somehow impacts very much in our masters. Um, UPC is one of the leading technical universities and uh, by many already acknowledged as the top university in South Europe. And as a public institution, we have four pillars in this university that we promote, right? So social responsibility, sustainability, equal opportunities. This is especially important for us and I will explain about this later in the admission and also cooperation and solidarity. Indeed, our university is one of the main universities having uh, a center for the uh, cooperation and development and even being a technical university we were one of the first to have such a, a, a center upc is a very large university so with more detail here we have more than 33,000 students of bachelor more than 5,000 students in in the masters right uh, as you can see here, we have more than 60 bachelors, more than 80 masters, more than 40 doctoral programs. So it's a very large university spanning all the aspects of um, engineering and, and, and architecture. Also another relevant aspect is, again, uh, how much we are oriented to industry and research. In 2020, the amount of uh, the turnover we, we raised was 55 uh, million euro. I can advance that the number for 2021, which is still not official, but is there, it's 75 million euros. So this is a university that is quite oriented to practical aspects and impacting in society. Another important aspect of our university is we have a strong internationalization. We have plenty of collaborations with companies and other universities all around the world. And you will see that it also has an impact as you as a potential student because 
we will offer a lot of uh, opportunities to do mobility to 42 different countries. Okay. But uh, let me now focus on the faculty. The Faculty of Informatics is the center of UPC focusing on promoting computer science and related subjects. So um, this basically means that we are the, facu the faculty who takes care of any studies related to the informatics uh, field. We were born in the, in the 1976 and started in 1977. So we are a young faculty, yet the impact of this faculty in Spain and Europe is uh, out of question. So we are the leading institution in Spain and one of the reference uh, institutions in Europe. We have been leading and uh, being uh, pioneers um, developing some studies and uh, many other universities have come here just later to uh, learn from our experience and develop similar studies. Now, in this sense, even if we are pretty young, the impact is uh, quite high. So the Faculty of Informatics is, uh, sits in the city of Barcelona. You can see this uh, icon here, the blue icon. Very, we are in the west side of the city uh, in one of the entries, conveniently located because we are very close to the city center. Just with uh, Metro, we can reach the city center in 20 mi minutes and we have two stops around. And also the good thing is that we have quite a lot of green around, which is uh, something good for a technical university. We are all the, di all the day you know, inside, so this is always something nice to have. Uh, here at, uh, you have the specific address and contact information. I will uh, provide more information later, but you always have the info.masters uh, email address where you can address any comment you may have about uh, uh, accessing uh, to our masters and our main uh, faculty uh, website. We are quite active in the social networks. You can find here uh, our accounts for Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram that you may want also to uh, check. So as a public faculty, our mission is to provide education on informatics engineering. Okay, so basically here we have two sub-objectives. First, to promote the dissemination of information technologies to contribute to society improvements. As you may know, informatics is a traversal uh, uh, science, so it means that it, has Im it impacts on absolutely any field in real life. And second, just provide a strong background to our students throughout their professional life. And this is one of the differential aspects, I would say, in our faculty. Our students are recognized for having very strong background and a strong and solid foundations because we prioritize lasting concepts. This is an engineering, so in the end, we have concepts that remain. The only thing that changes is how things are every time more accessible and more complex, but the foundations and the, and the, and the underlying aspects uh, are very uh, solid concepts that our students need to learn. And we also promote effective working habits and team working. So many of our uh, studies, uh, for well, basically all of them, uh, they have a lot of practical sessions. It means that the courses are not purely theoretical. All of them also have labs where you are you are applying labs uh, hands-on experience, and most of the times you are asked to work in a team. Okay. And finally, another important thing, especially at the master level, is we need to stimulate our students to learn on their own and have this ability to improve and learn on their on their uh, own capacity, not only just for the sake of improving and keep the pace of uh, such a field like uh, computing, uh, com, um, computing science, which is evolving all the time, but also because we will just endorse our students with a very strong um, orientation to innovation and research in all our masters. An important aspect of our faculty, and this shows transparency, is that all our master studies has been evaluated by external actors. So this is what is known as an internal quality assurance uh, system. This is implemented in our faculty. It means that from time to time, two different uh, organisms come to check our masters and the quality of our masters. One at the national level, one at the European level. Okay? This is ACU and ENCA. The good news is that all our masters achieve the maximum quality label in all the evaluations, both for ACU and, 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 and ENCA. This is with the ACU Excellence label. This is true for May, Miri, and Mai, three of our masters. The MDS still has not been evaluated because it, it's quite new. This one started in, in 2021, but it's also um, uh, relying on a quality uh, label because this master is the local counterpart of our international BDMA uh, Erasmus Mundus, that it's an excellence program recognized by the European Union and one of the flagship uh, masters in this matter. 
So um, one of the important things that both Aku and Enka uh, highlighted when analyzing our masters were three aspects that uh, I'm, I'm introducing here. First, the program learning outcomes. Uh, they highlight that our programs uh, are up to date and with a very strong innovation and research perspective. The second thing is the quality of the teaching staff. Uh, all our teachers, all of them are researchers and they are doing uh, or they are participating in, in, in projects either with companies, public institutions or other kind of organizations, right? And finally, the learning support services and resources that the faculty provides to the students. No? We have a lot of services starting for labs and, uh, and, and all kind of uh, supporting services for developing your, your, um, your practices, your assignments, but also uh, resources like you may know, like the library that has rooms for uh, studying on your own that you can book to, to work on, on a team, for example. All these three things were uh, highly evaluated or estimated by our students and also the committees that came from these institutions. And why you, you would choose FIB, no? This is the other question that uh, arises quite often. So what is different in our faculty with regard to others out there? So basically, this is acknowledged systematically along the time as one of the top 10 computer science schools in Europe. And we have very strong ties with uh, um, the best uh, faculties in Europe. We have the resources, we have the professors, and we have the experience to offer these uh, wide and range high value courses. You will see that our masters are quite transversal. When we tackle a topic, we go in, in both in deep, but also broad in the topic that we are uh, covering. And basically because since 1977 is a pioneering school that has a lot of impact both in Catalonia, Spain, and Europe. And as I said as well, we, our excellence is not because we say that we are very nice, also external actors like the agencies that we, uh, we just introduced are also certifying our, uh, our masters. So as a student, what are the opportunities that our masters are offering? Basically, these ones here. So you will learn in depth, uh, basically aspects also related to innovation and research in the topic that you choose. It's very easy in our case that you perform mobility. I will talk in the presentation later with more detail, but we can uh, we, we offer more than 42 different countries where to do mobility and more than 200 universities where you could uh, reallocate to doing a mobility abroad. And this is one of the things that we promote about among our students. It's an experience. It can really bring added value to your curriculum. And this is one of the things that uh, we uh, excel and very few other universities in Europe can uh, match with such open offer. The other thing is that uh, most of our master thesis students either uh, do the master thesis in a company or in a research institution. This is quite usual in our masters because we have 100% uh, job employ employability after finishing the masters. So very few studies can also say the same. We can, uh, we can, um, we are uh, very satisfied with this point, but also what happens or the consequence of this is that before our students finish the master, most of them are already working or doing internships. So then in a natural way, they do the master thesis in, in a company or in a research institution. Importantly, and another differential factor with other universities, our faculty is mandatory that the companies pay the students to do the internships. You cannot do an internship for free. This is not allowed at faculty, okay? And no, no company is even trying to, to ask for that. Eh? They know that they need to pay and all the uh, agreements are paid, okay? We have a very international environment. Depending on the master, we have up to 40, 50% of the applicants are from abroad, okay? You also can take a double degree uh, it means that uh, typically extending your master duration for, a, for some more months, typically a semester, you can get a double degree with other in, another university in Europe. Okay? Um, it's very easy during our masters to collaborate with research centers and groups linked to FIP. As I told you, most of your lecturers are researchers. They are participating in projects and they are looking for people all the time. So it's very easy that during the, the, the courses, mo most of the times you will get offers, but also satellite organizations like, for example, the Barcelona Supercomputing Center, which is quite aligned with, with our masters. Uh, they are hiring a lot of students from our masters continuously. 
And last but not least, also because it's important not only to focus on the technical aspects, right? Uh, the cultural or the social life in the faculty is quite vibrant and dynamic. There are a lot of uh, offers that you should be aware of, and I will also comment during the, the presentation. From the company's point of view, what do they appreciate about our students? Well, our, uh, our students are highly trained ICT um, um, professionals. It means that when they go to companies in very few months, they uh, get to uh, leading positions, okay? Um, entrepreneurship and research is something that all our students are trained on during the master. So it means that you can also go to uh, research institutions, innovation institutions, where you can do another kind of uh, job besides the usual no? um, uh, jobs that you may think of. Um, because we have the professionals to really impact in the companies and not just do or elaborate projects, but really stretch them to the new level. No? And this is something that they uh, appreciate very much, especially because of this uh, research and development uh, component that we have. And basically, as I said, because uh, companies are looking continuously for our students. So we, you will get a lot of offers during the master studies because, as I said, uh, the employment rate is 100%. So about the faculty, this is the, these are the numbers. So we have uh, slightly more than 2,500 students, uh, four bachelor degrees, eight master degrees. So we graduated in 2021 530 students. It's our 40th, 45th year of existence, and um, we have almost 300 lecturers and teaching assistants uh, working for, for our studies. We have a students associations, 14 of them. So there, as, as I told you, that uh, the life around the, the campus is, is, is lively. And we graduated more than 10,000 people in these 45 years. Okay. Also, as I said, one strength of our faculty is the international partnerships with more than 200 universities in, in, different, in 43 different uh, countries, offering four double degrees. And our students, when they come back and, um, after the mobility and they fill the surveys, they uh, show a very high level of satisfaction. Okay. So after introducing FIP for those, that, uh, for those of you that you were um, not familiar with us, uh, let's focus now on the masters. So I will focus on our main four masters, but I will also mention the three others that uh, we also take care. Let's just start with the uh, four that you see in the list. So the Master in Artificial Intelligence, the Master in Informatics Engineering, the Master in Innovation and Research in Informatics. This one has four intensifications, okay, in Advanced Computing, Computer Graphics and Virtual Reality, Computer Networks and Distributed Systems, and finally, High Performance Computing, okay? And then the last of the fourth, uh, four main masters is the master in data science. Then the other three are uh, satellite masters, which, which we participate, okay, but uh, they, they do not belong exclusively to the faculty. That's why they are in this uh, last list, the master for the professorate de secundaria, Erasmus Mundus master in big data management analytics, and finally the EU master in high performance computing. Okay. Um, Let's just, let's, before I start with the master, let's just start about how to find information. Because one of the good things about FIP, if, if most of the information you want is already available online, okay? So the main website to start with is masters.fip.upc.edu. This website has um, information for each master. <clears throat> so a specific information about sessions. We will do informative sessions specific for the masters but also why this master, what is differential in this master and why I should consider it, what is the specific curriculum, the courses that you may take. And if you click in each of the courses, you will just go to the syllabus and, and there you will find all the details about the, the courses that you may take during the master, which is one of the main aspects that you will be interested in. What are the employment opportunities, the students finishing this master on what they are working typically later. What is admission? This is important because when you apply, you need to be aware of how we are going to evaluate. So we just check the admission for each of the uh, masters and finally the faculty associated to it. So who will be your lecturers? Okay. Besides that, there are also aspects that we uh, promote there, like the international prestige grants that are specific for the faculty and the city of Barcelona for those of you who are not familiar with. But then we have the, the usual, the main 
page for the masters, which is called uh, fib.upc.edu. Here inside the studies, you have the master information. And I also, uh, I would encourage you to check this website. This website is the one that the students who are already students of the master follow all the details. But then you can see how the, the master will look like there. What kind of information we'll find there? How the enrollment is performed? Detailed curriculum and syllabus. So you can go there and see when a course is taken, in which schedule, all this kind of information is available there. Academic regulations, how you will be uh, evaluated during your, your stay in the master. For example, there are a certain minimum uh, number of, of, of ECTS that you need to pass during the first year mandatorily. Okay, so all this information is aware and also timetables and exams. Uh, when they are scheduled and on, on, on what format. And then you can also see the administrative procedures. All of them are online for transparency and also the academic calendars. The, cal the academic calendar for next year is still not available, but it will be more quite aligned with the current one. So you can get an idea when are the elective periods, when there are holidays and so on and so forth. This is masters.upc.edu, so here you have information on the masters, then you are supposed to click on the master of your interest to know more about it. The important thing is that uh, here you have information about uh, how to sign for information sessions, like you did, if you are here, right? Um, information when the pre-enrollment opens and closes. We open it on 27th February and will close on 26th May. And then you here have the general information sessions, these are like exactly the same as this one, but then you see that there are specific informa information sessions for May, MDS, and MIDI. If you are interested in any of these three masters, I would uh, suggest that you also attend this specific session because then we go very much in detail about the masters, okay? All the sessions are in English except May because May is the only master that we are uh, giving that it's not in English, it's in Catalan and Spanish. So this uh, session is in Spanish or Catalan, but for the other masters, all of them are in English. Okay. So what is the procedure to enroll in any of our masters? So in at UPC, this is the same for all the UPC masters. You need to follow six steps. Okay. The first one is to register and you need to enter your personal academic uh, details. The second one is that when you registered, you need to uh, acknowledge that you want to be evaluated. At this moment, you need to pay a tax of 30 euro. Okay, And at that moment is when the pre-enrollment starts, is when your, your application is going to be evaluated. You need to wait for the decision admission. I will tell you now the dates. Okay, And if you are accepted, hopefully so, right? You must accept explicitly the place, okay? The seat is there, but it's not forever. You need to explicitly accept it. Otherwise, typically we have waiting list in our masters. It will go to the next person in the waiting list, okay? To accept it, you need to pay 300 euro, but this is deducted from your first enrollment uh, sheet, okay? So it's not that you lose this money. This money is just uh, showing that you really want to pursue the master later. The reason to do this is that uh, our masters are quite demanded, so we have waiting list. If someone waits till the very last moment to drop out, someone is missing the opportunity to take the master, right? So we really want to fill all the spots, and that's why we are following this uh, procedure. As I said, the pre-enrollment, pre-enrollment, remember, is the second step that starts after you pay the 30 euro, and starts the 27th, or started the 27th of February, and it takes till 26th of May. There are two admission periods. What does it mean? That if you apply before the 21st of April, you will know, or you will have an, a notification by the 28th of April. So if you are sure about applying to any of our masters, do it in the first period because you will know if you're accepted or not and if you and then be in peace of mind that you know that if you are starting or not with us, okay? Nevertheless, if you apply till the second period, you will be answered by the second of June. So our commitment is try to answer as soon as possible. But please be aware that sometimes some of our masters have very long application lists. So sometimes we need some more days uh, beyond these dates, but it will be roughly speaking uh, around these dates. If any of our masters after the two application period have empty seats, we open a third period, but this is not guaranteed, okay? And I can already advance for the master in data science and the master in intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence, this is not going to happen. Typically it never happens, okay, this third period. 
Um, the tentative deadline for this third period is the end of June, and then, as always, one week later, we notify admissions. When you pre-enroll, what is important is that you read the admission criteria of each master, okay? And this is an advice. Pay a lot of attention to the motivation letter. I've seen a lot of uh, strong candidates that have very weak motivation letters, and we want motivated people here taking the masters, okay? So take your time, write a nice motivation letter, explain why you want to do the master, why do you think you can pro uh, provide something additional, right? Because as I said, we look for motivated people. We also look for diversity. So it's not that we are looking for a very specific kind of person or profile. No, we want just to promote diversity in these in this studies, right? So if you have something special to, to provide, just make emphasis in the, in the motivation letter, okay? So take your time, please, to write a, a strong and nice motivation letter to the uh, commission that will be evaluating your application. To do the pre-enrollment, it's done at the very specific page of any of the masters. So you go to masters, click on any of the, of the masters, and then if you cr scroll down, you will find this piece that I, I put here, okay? Just clicking on this blue button is when you start the pre-enrollment. You need to enter all the data there. And be aware of a typical mistake and a question we, we receive and a tip for masters is that you need to provide all the information there. Otherwise, till you don't do so, it will not appear the button to pay the taxes and get evaluated. If the button doesn't appear, is that you are missing some information, okay? So be sure to, to, to enter all the information you need so that the, the paid tax uh, button will appear. There is a link here, as I said, both this um, presentation that it's recorded right now and also the, the slides here will be available online, so you can also later follow these links to get more detail about these aspects. So what about admission? Okay, so after you finish the pre-enrollment, by the 28th of April, for those of you applying in the first uh, period, we will give you three possible outcomes for your application. Accept, reject, or postpone. Okay. Accept is congratulations, you are in. Okay. Reject means that at this point, your bachelor or your background is not enough to follow the master. Okay. So this is the meaning of reject. And postpone is typically for those masters with very large uh, amount of people applying that if you are in the gray zone and you are uh, not clear that you can, uh, you will enter, we postpone the decision till we uh, get people from the second round, okay? So postpone means that the final answer, either accept or waiting list, will happen at the end of the second period if you get a postpone, okay? The second period, however, can only get as an output, accept, reject, the same meaning, or waiting list. It means you can be accepted in the master, but all of you are ranked, okay? And then we have a, an amount of, of seats uh, available per master, okay? Uh, uh, typically, it depends on the master, I will mention it later, but it's around 40, 50 uh, seats per master, okay? So here you have basically what I just said in, in words. If you are accepted, remember that you need to explicitly accept the seat, okay? So it means that you need to go accept, pay the 300 euros that will be deducted later from your first enrollment. And in this way, you have the, the position guaranteed, okay? Reserved for you. Otherwise, it will be freed and assigned to someone in the waiting list. Let's just start with the masters, no? And giving a, an overall view of each of them. The first one is the master in informatics engineering. As we say, this is the Swiss army knife of our masters. So when you take this master, basically is that you want to broaden your knowledge in the field. Typically this master is for people who want to go to companies or organizations, research organizations, where they want to apply all the knowledge that they gain during the bachelor and the master, either for innovation or adding value to the company. Okay, so basically you are trained in management aspects because you are supposed after taking this master to have a high profile and then you will be uh, managing and leading teams. Okay, so you need to be trained in these management aspects which are mandatory in this master. But also the second aspect of, of this is that you learn a lot of aspects related to uh, uh, engineering informatics that you decide 
in which one you want to specialize because there is quite a wide and open broad um, amount of, of courses that you may choose from and then you specialize in what things are interesting for you so that you can really add this value to the companies okay so this master is meant to open your mind to broaden your aspect your broaden your curriculum from the informatics perspective and be able to have a, a big impact as a, someone who will get a management leader uh, position soon in in, in a company or a organization in case you are familiar with when after taking this master the degree that you obtain is equivalent to the old engineering engineer informatica that was uh, it stopped existing after bologna okay after we implemented bologna but this was the five years old um, degree that we had at the bachelor level in the past okay so basically if you are familiar with this engineering informatica is a very strong CV, right? Someone with five years of studies in, on, on the topic with a, a lot of depth in, in several aspects of, um, of informatics. This master, importantly, got all the accreditations at the maximum level, both for Equine and uh, Acu Excellence, okay? And uh, this is the only master that is taught in Spanish and Catalan. Most of the courses are in Spanish, but there are quite uh, a, a couple of per semester or one per semester at most that are taught in Catalan. For those, those of you that might be uh, native in Spanish, but not in Catalan, we have support to Spanish speaking uh, students. So basically there are courses to learn the basic of Catalan. I must also say that most of the students directly go to the lectures in Catalan and it's enough. They can follow it. Okay, after two weeks or three weeks, you are more than uh, enough to to follow the courses but just to let you know that in case that you are spanish speaking uh, but not catalan speaking there are these support these courses at the fac at the university level to learn basic catalan this master is 90 ects so 1.5 years okay three semesters and it has a strong professional orientation as i said so this this is people who want to have an impact on companies just uh, being able to add value to companies okay so you have two kinds of ECTS here, um, ECTS on IT, specific informatics uh, courses or management courses. The management courses, you, you learn there how to lead with uh, lead teams, how to do project management, how to deal with innovation and research in real projects. OK, so it's just for this kind of profiles. So it's mandatory to take 12 ECTS on management. Nine of them are a part of the compulsory courses and you need to take them. But then you need to take three more from the elective bunch that we have. Okay. Then the rest are IT courses and the final master thesis is 30 CTS. About the master thesis, let me know, uh, let me tell you that all the master thesis in our masters are quite demanding. So you need to prove that you are able to put into practice all what you learned. Okay. So uh, historically, the master thesis is demanding in all our masters, also in this one. So basically, that's why we accommodate a lot of ECTS. 30 ECTS is a lot of ECTS. This is 900 hours of work in the thesis. Okay. May has uh, a strong professional orientation, and most of our students work while they take these masters. So we have a lot of industrial agreements, both uh, taking curricular internships. What does it mean, curricular internships? That if you are working or doing an internship during the master, you can gain ECTS from the elective ones, okay, up to 12. And uh, also, um, in case that we identify that you have some gap or, or lack of background in any aspect of computer science, we may ask you to, to take some complementary courses before starting the master. Okay, so this means that besides the 90 ECTS that you need to take to finish the master, you may need to take extra ECTS, okay, up to one semester, depending on your background, to guarantee that you can successfully follow the master. If you are assigned complementary courses, you need to do it before starting the, the, the master itself. Okay, so it's mandatory to start with these courses. When do we assign complementary courses uh, to applicants? When typically you haven't had a, a bachelor in computer science, something close, but not specifically a, a master in, in, in computer science, a bachelor in computer science, so that you maybe are missing uh, courses, I don't know, in uh, computer architecture 
or interfaces, human interfaces, or databases. So if you are missing any of these basic courses of computer science, you will be uh, asked to take one of them. So if you go to the masters fib.upc.edu website, let me it open it here as an example. Um, so you will go to the main website here. This is for, for the master uh, May. And here you have the admission information that I told you. This is a specific per master. Please read this part of the master that you are interested in. And also you will find here the curriculum aspect. For the curriculum, you will have mandatory and elective courses. These are all the courses that you have in the master. If you click in any of them, you go to the syllabus. Okay, and you have all the detail here about the course, how it works and so on and so forth. So take your time to explore the master, the courses that it's offering, because it's one of the important things to make a decision. Okay. So uh, as you see here, for example, in May, you have direction and management module. You need to take 12 ECTS, nine of them are mandatory, these orange uh, courses. And then you need to take three extra ECTS from the blue ones. And the same for this, you need to take 48 ECTS from these ones. The orange ones, uh, orange ones are uh, mandatory. The other ones you can decide to take. And this is what they said about this master. You can specialize on whatever you want. There, there are a lot of different information th uh, or courses here, like digital identity, internet of things, cloud computing, computer games, data visualization, etc. So all these courses depend very much on what you want to specialize. What do you think you can be your strength when going to a company and bringing value to this company? It's up to you. You need to uh, make up your own uh, CV, right? Okay, May has what we call the industrial modality. Uh, why did we come with this? Well, basically because as I said, a lot of our students work while doing May, okay? So May, and the industrial modality of May, it's May. It's exactly the same master. You are not taking any other, it's exactly the same master. The only difference is that it's meant for people who are going to take it part-time. Part-time means that you at most per semester can take three, uh, 18 ECTS, not 30, but 18, okay? This is an option that the other masters also have, but we especially uh, focus on this one because as I said, this is the master that most of our students uh, work while doing it. Um, basically, this is meant to have a very intensive training, uh, both from the academic and professional side, and focusing on real project management and leadership. No, so when you take this option, instead of doing the master in 1.5 years, you go to two years. Okay, so one extra semester, but part time. Okay, what is the commitment that we have from the faculty to facilitate that you work during this time? The first one is that you will have a maximum of four or five hours per day. Dedica dedicated to the studies at FIP. Okay. But it means that you need to accommodate uh, an amount of time. Eh? Basically, because either you need to come three afternoons per week to do the lectures, face-to-face -face lectures from two to, uh, from two to eight, but the two other days are not holidays. Eh? The two other days you need to do the assignments and the work that these courses typically expect from you. Okay, And this is something that happens in all our masters. The, uh, the courses have a theoretical aspect, but also a very practical aspect. And it means that there are a lot of labs, a lot of projects that you need to do out of hours of lectures, okay? So um, after the, the other time of the day, no, up, up to uh, 7.5 or eight hours, you are supposed to be working in a company, either in an internship or, or working, okay? Uh, in this slide, I will not go into detail, but you can uh, carefully look at it later in, in at home. Uh, but basically, the, on the left, you have May, the regular one finishing in three semesters. In industrial May, this is the path that we re uh, recommend to you to follow. Basically, you are doing less courses, 18 ECTS per semester in, instead of 30. Okay, But then look that on parallel, while you are taking these 18 ECTS, you are working or you are doing an internship. Then the master thesis is done at a company and then look that for, for us, this is both academic and industrial, okay? Doing this, you do 48 ECTS during the three first semester taking courses. The other 42 ECTS are done in a company. 30 of them is the master thesis, okay? And 12 are uh, hours of work that are recognized as elective, uh, elective credits. 
So with this, you do the, the, the total 90 ECTS that you need to do for this master. Importantly, master thesis in this uh, modality is meant to be done at a company. In our own jargon, because we have a jargon for the master thesis, this is modality B or D. Modality B means a company in Barcelona. Modality D is abroad, okay? Because you can do your master thesis in a company in Germany, okay? This is per perfectly possible. Just take into in, in your time to, to analyze this, uh, this slide if you are interested in the May modality, uh, the industrial modality of May. Well, the second of our masters that I'm going to present today is the Master in Innovation and Research in Informatics. This is a very uh, rigorous and in-depth master going into four specializations where you will be there ready to do research at the highest level, okay? So these uh, specializations go very much in depth, but in one specialization, right? This is the main difference with me. So the four specializations are advanced computing, computer graphics and virtual reality, computer networks and distributed systems, and finally high performance computing. As you can see from the names, no, advanced computing, basically you are going to learn how to code non-trivial applications or algorithms that require very advanced training. For example, algorithms for logistics, right? That they have a very high complexity, computational complexity, and require from a smart solutions to, to code, okay? Or to develop algorithms. Typically are algorithms that fall into the MP hard problems uh, or comput uh, computational class, and then you find ways to deal with them, okay? We, this is the kind of um, courses that you may find here. The second one is how to develop very advanced computer graphics and, re and virtual reality either for companies, institutions, and how to apply them in the day-by-day -day life. No? Um, the third one is computer networks and distributed systems, how to develop very advanced and complex systems distributed. It means that they are able to uh, perform very complex uh, computations and storage over the, ne the network, and this is every time more and more needed. And finally, high-performance computing, it means when you require when your problem is so hard that you need a supercomputer to solve it, okay? Uh, this specialization is very much aligned with the Barcelona Supercomputing Center, okay? And uh, basically what you are going to learn there is how to program in a supercomputing environment and what kind of problems you can solve in there. MIDI, like May, got the maximum accreditation at the European national level. So at the quality level, they w it was evaluated at the highest level. This is fully taught in English, and you require a B2 uh, English certificate to start this master, okay? It's a master of two years, 120 ECTS. It has a common layer of common courses that is common for the four specializations where basically you are learning basic things for research, like what is research and how to do research. There is a course on this. Another one is how to do experiments, okay? which is also obviously needed in, in research, so on and so forth, okay? So you have 30 ECTS on very basic concepts required for research in general. And then you have 48 that depend on the specialization you take. You take the specialization from the very beginning when you enroll in this master, okay? So then uh, depending on the specialization you take, you have 48 ECTS that depend on them. Then like in, in our masters, you have 12 elective ones, Many people do these 12 doing internships and working in companies, okay? Otherwise, you can take uh, courses either from the other specializations or other masters. And finally, again, another master thesis of 30 CTS, so 900 hours of work, okay? Again, a demanding and very much research-oriented uh, thesis in this case. So you have here the, the specializations, you have the links to each of them, just um, shown which is the syl syllabus and the admission, what background you are supposed to follow, but basically if you are a computer science, you are fine with any of them, okay? Mid uh, MIDI as well has industrial agreement. Most of these students, since they are very much focused on research, they are also ending up uh, working on uh, research institutions of the Barcelona Supercomputing Center, and then uh, either taking internships or using their professional experience that you can cover these 12 elective co uh, ECTS here. And finally, like in May, depending on your background, we may ask you to take complementary courses as well. Okay? This depends fully on the bachelor that you took and if there is any gap that we need to cover. Okay? 
The third one is the master in data science. This master is fully focused on how to manage and analyze data and extract value out of it. Okay, so this is basically fully aligned with the new uh, data-driven economy that is promoted uh, right nowadays. This master has two main aspects covered: data management. Here is the computer science side of the problem. So how to uh, deal with the data life cycle? Basically, data flows, database systems, how to ingest this data, prepare it, um, store it, uh, transform it, and prepare it so the analysis can happen later. And this is the second part, data analysis. Here is you will see different kinds of analysis, either from the data mining perspective or the machine learning perspective, to extract advanced models or uh, data insights that uh, provide va added value to the companies. This uh, master is uh, very much focused on industry to go later to work but it also allows you to go to research okay and so then afterwards you can uh, focus on um, on on doing a phd for example after taking this master this master is new from 2021 it started in september 2021 it's our last master so it still has not been accredited but this master as i will show you later is the local counterpart of our Erasmus Mundus Master in Big Data Management and Analytics, which is the flagship uh, European uh, master in the topic. So basically, even if still we don't have uh, the accreditations, there are enough evidences that this master will have also the maximum uh, level of accreditation when evaluated. It's fully taught in English, okay? So a B2 is required to take this master. And this is a two-year master with 54 credits that are mandatory. All of them take during the first semester and a uh, large part of the second semester, so the first year. And then you have 36 elective courses to specialize on whatever you want. Okay? So there are three main blocks to just deep dive on very specific uh, topics like uh, uh, deep learning, uh, time series, or things like that. Or the other aspects that you may find here are uh, aspects related with application domains like how to do master, uh, how to do data science for mobility, for example, or for bioinformatics, this kind of stuff. And finally, also courses related with research and innovation, because this master also has a very strong research and innovation aspect, data science by definition. So there is also the third block of courses, elective courses in this, in this aspect. Again, another master thesis of 30 ECTS, so 900 hours of work, okay, another demanding uh, uh, ECTS. And here you have the three uh, specialization blocks that I was mentioning uh, from the electives, no? the deep dive as, uh, specific aspects. Here you go into advanced uh, modelization aspects from the mathematical point of view, typically. No? So like I said, uh, time series, by, uh, by, uh, statist uh, Bayesian statistics, this kind of stuff conform this, this block. The second one is applied. Uh, data science for bioinformatics, health, transportation, so on and so forth. And the last one is innovation and research to train yourself on how to uh, extract value from it. This master allow internships, but you can only get ECTS from your internship for the master thesis. Okay, you cannot use the internship to take elective courses. Okay, this is a difference with May and Miri. And finally, this, this master does not consider complementary courses. If you don't get, if you have any gap in your background, uh, then it means that you will be rejected, okay? If you are accepted, it's because you have the background. <clears throat> the last of the masters is the master in artificial intelligence, okay? So this focus basically on how to um, apply these uh, techniques in, in, in reality. This master is jointly offered with two other universities, okay? The University of Barcelona and the University Rovira Virgili in Tarragona. Importantly, lectures happen in the three campus, and you cannot choose to stay in only one campus, okay? Students move around. So this means that you, one day per week, you need to go to Tarragona, where Universitat Rovira Virgili uh, sits, okay? This master also was accredited with the maximum level of excellence, both from ACU and, uh, and, and the European level, and it's fully taught in English. This is a 90 ECTS, so 1.5 years, three semesters. Okay? There are 30 courses, uh, 30 ECTS, so the first semester is compulsory courses. Then during the second semester, you specialize. And then the last one, 12 ECTS are 
courses that you want to take and 18 on the master. So this is the only master that the master thesis is not 30 CTS, it's less hours, okay? Less hours, but uh, still a fair amount in the, in, in the size of 18 ECTS. This master uh, is a, a, an overall view of artificial intelligence. So you have seven intensifications, different aspects of artificial intelligence. So uh, these, these are the ones that uh, are covered, data science and computational intelligence, multi-agent systems and human computer interaction, hot topics in artificial intelligence and professional practice, so very much applied, okay, this, this, uh, this one. Knowledge engineering and machine learning, and then modeling, reasoning, and problem solving, and finally, vision, perception, and robotics together with assistive technologies. Importantly, and uh, this is uh, a misconception that sometimes we find with this master, not all the courses in artificial intelligence are data-driven because many students apply here for the data-driven aspects just realize that this is one of the intensifications. So you will have courses in artificial intelligence in other aspects than the purely data-driven. Please check the, the syllabus of the courses and what is available there to be fully sure what is uh, there, okay? Um, but basically, in the 30 mandatory ECTS, you will get different kinds of courses, courses in logics and reasoning, you will have knowledge representation, you will have some on data uh, AI, of course, but it's a kind of a broad range of artificial intelligence techniques. Okay. And finally, this master allows you to also take industrial agreements. You can also do curricular internships here. So out of the 42 elective ones, 12 can be internships or, or working companies. And uh, also this one as well might uh, ask you to take some complementary courses in case that there is any gap on your CV or um, bachelor, okay? So the other masters, this one is uh, Master Per Professorate Secundaria. This is people who want to be teachers at the, at the secondary school, okay? So um, this is a master also taught in Catalan and Spanish. And you, to access to this, you need to get uh, a third level language. It can be any language, it doesn't need to be English, but uh, it can be French or any other. And there are uh, a few uh, different uh, intensifications. You can specialize as a lecturer in technology for ESO and Bachillerat. ESO and Bachillerat is the secondary school here in, in Spain. Or industrial technologies, which is uh, for people who want to focus on um, formation professional. This is the only one of our masters which is habilitant. What does it mean? That to be a lecturer in the secondary school, you really need to have this master, otherwise you cannot do it, okay? It's a master of one year, 60 CTS, and as many people is working, because they are working as lecturers, interim lecturers, no? Uh, when interim teachers, while they are taking this master, there is a slow track uh, to facilitate doing it, and there is also the practicum when you do practices in a secondary school. So for more details, just follow this link. But as I told you, this is not a purely computer uh, science or informatics master. It's more for learning to be a teacher in the aspects of technology. And then to apply, you don't need to do it, as I said before, there is a specific website, okay, that you will find in, in the link that I saw in the previous site. The pre-registration pre and enrollment, it's also different to our masters because it depends on Generalitat de Catalunya, the local government of Catalonia, right? So just uh, be aware that by the end of July to mid-September, you would need to pre-register and uh, the information sessions that are specific typically in July and September, okay? The second one is the master Erasmus Mundus in Big Data Management and Analytics. We have been doing this master for 12 years and this is one of the flagship masters in Europe and uh, specifically in the area of big data and data science. Indeed, our local master in data science is the local counterpart of this master, okay? It's coordinated by the Université Livre de Brussels and uh, we together with the University of Padova, Eindhoven and Paris-Saclay in Paris um, are the other uh, institutes participating. This master, uh, provides a certain amount of grants for the students. Uh, so these grants are pretty competitive. And so we closed the, um, the, the, the grants for the, for the next generation of BDMA and we had more than 800 applications to this master, okay? So the, the, the numbers are bold and the number of grants we have is around 25. So they are quite competitive. Eh? 
But then there is a second period, which is self-funded, that starts in March and it's open. So this is a students who want to follow this master on their own, paying it themselves. Then you are still on time to apply to it. This is a master of two years, 120 CTS. The first year is mandatory for all students. The first semester happens in Brussels, the second one here and at UPC. And this is fixed, you cannot uh, change it. But then there is 30 credits that depend on the specialization you take and finally the master thesis. You have the website here to know more, but this is the, the itinerary that you, you may follow. As you say, the first semester is in Brussels, then UPC, so mobility is mandatory. Then there is an Erasmus uh, uh, summer school that is mandatory for our, all our students. If you are around this year, it will be in Barcelona, okay? So um, the first week of July. So if you want to know more about this summer school, which will be open for other students beyond uh, BDMA. And then you have a specialization, either uh, business process analytics, how to do analysis of processes. And this is done in Eindhoven, which is the main university behind this approach of analyzing data, not as a data sets, but as processes. The second one is decision support and data analytics. This goes very much into depth in the machine learning aspects. No? Here you go to uh, graph neural networks, deep learning, and all the advanced aspects that have not been covered in the first year. And the last one is statistics and deep learning for data analytics at the Uni of Padova. The difference with the second one is this one is very much applied. Most of the semester is applying all these concepts to very specific domains, okay? And the fourth semester you can move again and take the master thesis in any of the partners. And then there is a joint final event where all the students defend the master thesis together in one of the institutions. Uh, this year, for example, will be in Eindhoven, okay? But importantly, this mobility is mandatory, okay? Our other flagship uh, master is in uh, EU for HPC. Uh, high performance computing is one of the main topics that we have developed a lot in this faculty. As you know, the Barcelona Supercomputing Center is just here at the side. No? So as you can imagine, many of our lecturers are experts on this topic and there are also uh, a master um, providing deep, uh, deep formation, um, deep education in this aspect, which is the EU for HPC. Like BDMA and the Master of Data Science, EU for HPC, the local counterpart is the MIDI HPC specialization. Okay, so this master builds on top of the MIDI HPC specialization. It's coordinated by the University of Luxembourg and several other universities. You see here UPC, Politecnico Milano, the University of Nuremberg, the Sorbonne University, Sofia, University de la Svizzera Italiana, e Cungliga Tecnica in uh, Sweden, okay? This master is implemented as a dual degree. It means that you start in one of these universities and take one year, and the second year you do it in one of the other uh, six universities. It's a dual degree, okay? There are consor consortium grants here as well, but they are a bit different to BDMA. In this case, what you get is a fee waiving for eligible students. If you go to the website, you will see if you, uh, um, can be selected as an eligible student to, to get this fee waiving. And also there is an, a fixed amount of money for mobility because mobility is mandatory. Between the first and second year, you need to move to another university. Like BDMA, this program has been accredited by the European Commission. So it's one of the flagship uh, programs in, in Europe. And this master indeed is behind of what you may have heard that also UPC got uh, the next supercomputer that is going to be built in Europe is going to be built here uh, in the campus. So one of the things that went together with this project was teaching people in high performance computing because we will need a lot of people in this area in the next years, right? So this is uh, the consequence is this master. The application period, this master has different application periods. It opens along the time and you need to apply during these application periods. The answer is two weeks after the deadline of the application period. The current one finishes on the 14th of April. Then another one will open uh, for the 17th of April till the 31st of May, okay? Very aligned with the deadlines at UPC in general, okay? But the important thing is that you need also to bear in mind the deadlines of the universities that you want to follow. For example, if you apply to EO for uh, HPC and choose UPC, you will start MIDI HPC, okay? It's, it's MIDI HPC, but from the 
European side and you will be forced to do a mobility during the second year, okay? So if you are thinking of doing MIDI HPC, consider applying to this one because you may get the fee waiving and the mobility grant, okay? Then this, this is uh, a two years master, 120 uh, ECTS. There are, uh, you spend uh, one year with fundamental courses the first year, six uh, months or so half a year doing a specialization and the other six months an internship that also serves as the master thesis, okay? There is also a mandatory summer school where people taking this master from all the universities uh, get together. And as I said, the mobility scheme is mandatory, but this time between two of the seven, okay? The, man, the, the academic paths depend on the university you start. It's not that you can move from one to any of the other six, depending on which one you take as a starting, you may choose one or another of the others because the, 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 the consortium guarantees that the academic path makes sense, right? So if you start in, in one place, the courses that you are going to take in the second year complement well, okay? So if you have uh, doubts about any of these uh, masters from the academic point of view, for example, I, I check the syllabus, I, it's not clear to me what kind of courses I'm going to take in this master. Contact the, the, the academic responsible. The people who are listed here are people who, who coordinate from an academic perspective the masters. So they can answer in depth these kind of questions, okay? So you have here the name of the person in charge of the master and also the email. Uh, I myself, as you can see here, I will be answering your questions on BDMA, MDS, and May. But then if you want to address to any of the media specializations or my, there are uh, coordinators that will answer better these kind of questions. Just realize that MIDI HPC, as I said, is overlapping with the EU for HPC. So it's the same person, Josep Bioza, taking care of this one. And finally, for the Master of uh, Professorate in Secundaria, you have also an address here uh, specifically for this Master, okay? <clears throat> so please consider writing to the academic coordinators if you have academic questions. If your question is generic about the procedure, about uh, price of the ECTS, things more uh, administrative, please contact info.masters, okay? So the next thing, what are the prices? The prices we had this year for the, our masters are the one that appear here. Um, for the next year, 20, uh, 23, 2024, we will know them in July, okay? So uh, just to let you know that there is a commitment from the Catalan government to lower the prices of these CTS. So uh, what was agreed in the past is that eventually all the masters will converge to a price for the ECTS of 17.69. So I would expect that they continue uh, decreasing the price for ECTS. This year, the current academic year, they didn't decrease it. Uh, it was exactly the same. So likely, likely uh, if they want to meet the commitment they had, there should be another decrease. Don't expect to be a decrease exactly to 17. It will be gradual for sure, but uh, there should be perspectives in this direction. So if you are a, a student uh, from the European Union, the price for ECTS for May, MIDI, MDS, MAI, and EU for HPC is 27.76. Uh, for BDMA, the price is different, 75 euros, okay? If you are from the program countries, which is not exactly the same as European Union, as you can see here. And then uh, for non-European Union students, uh, there is uh, different prices that you can find here as well. For BDMA is 150, for the other masters is 41.05, okay? Um, importantly, when the decree with the prices is out, uh, UPC always updates the, the final prices in this link. So you can always uh, get up-to-date information in this link. But as I will tell you, the final prices will be in July, so you will be accepted in the master before knowing how much you are going to pay. But this is an upper bound. You can take it this way, okay? And the next things are internships. Now I will focus on things that are uh, different in our faculty, and I think that they bring added value to take a master here. The first one is internships. If you are interested in doing an internship during your master, you can do it in any of the masters, okay? All our masters allow industrial practices. And we have a very um, 
very up-to-date website that you can find here in this link. And you see there is information for companies, information for the students and the regulations. Here you have things like, for example, what is the minimum price the company needs to pay to the students to do the internship, okay? For master students, it's 11 euro per hour. We don't accept nothing less than that, okay? It's in our regulations. And all internships must be paid. We don't accept internships that are not paid. Nevertheless, I can guarantee you that we sign a lot of internships, okay? So companies are very keen on getting our students paying 11 euros. That's cheap for them, okay? And this is a, a good way to uh, get the students already participating in the company. And 90% of them sign a contract afterwards or, or they are offered to sign a contract, okay? So for the internships, what you need to know is that there are two kinds of internships. What we call extracurricular or curricular. What does it mean? Curricular internships means that you can claim elective ECTS afterwards. Okay, so it means that you don't need to take elective courses. You can claim elective ECTS out of this internship. So you can do curricular uh, practices in all our masters except MDS. Okay, MDS allows you to do practices, but you will not be able to claim ECTS from it. Just you will be working in a company, participating in a company, but you will need still to do all the elective courses. The only exception is the master's thesis. The master's thesis can be done in a company for all the masters, included master of data science. Okay? So it means that you do your master's thesis in modality B or D. It means in a company, local or abroad. And then this uh, work that you do in the company, uh, it's acknowledged with the 30 CTS of the master, a master's thesis. Okay? Besides that, uh, there is a limit and number of hours that you can do as an internship, okay? So it depends on the number of uh, ECTS of the master. So the masters that has 90 ECTS, that it's May and May, there is a maximum of 900 hours per year, okay? The masters with 120 ECTS, you can do 1,200 hours per year. This is median MDS. Also, you can recognize your professional experience before the master or during the master as ECTS in all the masters, but again, MDS. MDS doesn't recognize professional experience, okay? So what is the rule here? It's a bit different to the internships. Basically, the, there is a thumb rule, which is uh, 1,600 hours are equivalent to six ECTS, okay? If you do more than 1,600, then proportionally the number of ECTS, okay? So there are two ways to uh, get professional experience during your master. Either you sign a contract on your own with a company, this is the professional experience, the last one, and then you will get convalidated ECTS if the master allows so, okay? Following this rule, or just taking an internship through our means the internships here that you are paid a minimum amount of hours per uh, of euros per hour. Just uh, you are protected by the faculty because the good thing about internships. Uh, that's why I, I always uh, encourage you to do internships if possible. Is that the company needs to write a formative um, a schedule for you, so it needs to inform the faculty what you are going to do during your internship, and this is signed by the faculty, by the universe, uh, by the company, and by the student. So it means that the company cannot ask you to do other things than that, okay? And one of the things that we guarantee as academic uh, coordinators of the masters is that what the, comp the company is offering makes sense, okay? And it's an added value for you. So you are protected from this point of view because then if the company is putting problem of whatever uh, kind, the faculty is going to, to complain on your name, on your behalf, okay? But this is not mandatory yet. I want this to leave it clear because this is an, an, a usual question we have. It's not mandatory to do internships through uh, FIP. You can sign a contract with whatever company at any moment. That's fine, eh? So, and then answering the other question that they typically get is, can I do my studies part-time? Absolutely, yes. All the masters allow this. Okay? And a big portion of our students do it part-time. So it means that you can take at most 18 ECTS per semester. Okay? And importantly, importantly, you have, uh, because you need to finish your master 
For example, let's take a master of four semesters, so 120 ECTS as a reference, okay? Meteor MDS, for example. If you have four semesters, uh, master, you need to finish your master in at most six semesters. So you have two extra semesters to finish, okay? So if you are part-time, you need to add one semester more, so seven semesters, okay? So the same for May and May. If you have three semesters per uh, for the master, you have an extra one plus one more if it's part-time, so five semesters, okay? And it's important that you take this into account. Schedule well when you are planning for a master, if you are going to do it part-time, because you have a limited number of semesters to finish. It's not an infinite amount of time, eh? Okay, so please be careful with this. So about mobility and internationalization, I think this is one of the strengths of our faculty. I don't think there is uh, many faculties out there that are able to offer such a broad uh, offer of mobility to different universities and countries. We have agreements with the best universities in Europe uh, and in 42 different countries. All the masters allow to study abroad. I encourage you to consider this if possible, okay? Uh, for MIDI, you can take the whole second year abroad. For MDS, you can take the whole second year abroad. For May and May, since they are 90 CTS, you are only allowed to take 30 CTS, the third semester. Okay. <clears throat> what mobility programs we participate in? A lot. Okay. There are a lot of frameworks. So we participate in frameworks with CERN, that you may know, the, the organization in Switzerland. Erasmus Plus, which is one of the main ways to do uh, mobility, but then Unitec, uh, agreements with Latin America, the States and Canada, also China, and then we have a strong agreements with Japanese universities with two different uh, mobility programs, the National Institute of Informatics in Tokyo and the Vulcanus in Japan, okay? On top of that, you can move just to do, for example, uh, one semester or two in case of media of MDS abroad, during the second year, or you can sign for a double degree. It means that if you sign for a double degree with one of the offers that we have, when you move there, you typically need to do an extra semester, but then you get the title from UPC and the title from the destination university. You get two titles. That's why it's called a double degree. No? <coughs> Another way to go abroad, if you say, okay, I don't want to go that for that long, okay, you can go for an internship if you want. And there are also a lot of frameworks. There are frameworks that allow you to go uh, for, a, for a company. The Erasmus Plus framework allows for this, and many of you don't know this. You think that Erasmus Plus is purely academic. You can go to a, a, comp a company as well via this. But there are some others like IAST, IESEC, Entry Park. There are a lot of options. Eh? <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> And the mobility can be to a company or also to academic institutions. Many academic institutions allow you to go to uh, do the master thesis at a company, but in an industrial environment, okay? It's typically with a research group there or a research uh, organization, but it's belonging to one of the other universities. There are other activities that also mobility. Uh, summer schools, short tales that the Google Summer Code Camp or things like that that we also participate, the CERN um, uh, mobility during summer. There are a lot of uh, small things that are uh, also available. So there are a lot of options. Please consider them. From an academic perspective, I can tell you that if you finish with mobility, your CV will shine, okay? Because it means that you are able to mingle in another environment, know other cultures and work there and be successful. Okay, this is always important. Obviously, when you move abroad, there is a financial uh, load, of, of course, and sometimes some of these frameworks have a scholarships uh, to facilitate mobility. These scholarships by no means will cover the whole mobility. They can be around 500 euros, 600 euros, something like that, so you will not cover, for example, in some of the most expensive cities in Europe, right? But at least will help. So just to let you know that uh, where our students go, in February 2023, 109 of our students signed to go abroad, okay? And you can see here what is the first option per country that they selected. So uh, Switzerland is the main country where we sent the students. 
but follow, followed by uh, northern countries, so our students like the cult, <laughs> it seems. So they are going to Sweden, Canada, and Germany as the main options, okay? But as you see, we have plenty of other options like uh, South Korea, Chin China, Taiwan. So there are a lot of options around. Okay. Mobility is online as well. You can go to this link. And then if you go, you as a student, if you do mobility, you need to check the outgoing. So as a student, you will be moving outgoing, right? So just click here. You will find all the frameworks and all the details about how to apply. The only problem with mobility. It's quite bureaucratic and you need to start doing mobility or planning mobility way ahead. Way ahead, it means one year ahead typically, okay? So that's why we help you with uh, a calendar with the open calls. This is a screenshot from today. You see that most of them are closed now because uh, people who applied for mobility for next year, it was done in February, okay? So just uh, close them, but uh, still there are uh, calls that are open right now for summer, like the Google Summer of Code, but there are some others that will appear here in summer, like the CERN mobility that we typically have. Uh, we typically have. Just see that here we uh, tell you what are the deadlines, uh, warn you when something is going to be open or, or already opened, so you don't miss uh, the application period. Nevertheless, as I said, it's pretty bureaucratic. You need to know very well what are the timing and apply on time. That's why we have two information sessions, okay? Quite successful uh, this year. Um, you, you have the dates of the ones that happened this uh, academic year. You can expect roughly uh, same periods next year, no? So the first semester, we typically do it mid-November and uh, the second semester is mid-February because the, the choices for the mobility in the second semester is uh, right at the end of February. So then afterwards, people are already assigned to uh, their places for mobility, okay? If you have doubts, our website is pretty complete, but we also have an email to know more about how mobility works at UPC, uh, at FIP in this case, uh, which is this email that I put here. Mobility in general is something important to consider. And again, I would encourage you to consider it if you go for as, as a student, because it will make you your CV uh, shine a bit more. What about grants and aids? Well, um, the faculty offers a, uh, quite a, a good selection of grants. Well, um, you know that there are grants from the ministry, the Spanish ministry for nationals. Uh, they offer uh, grants for, for um, people who want to study a master, but then this is only for national people. Then we have grants that are uh, funded by companies that they have a good relationship with the faculty, okay, that we advertise in this link here. If you go to this link now, you will see the ones from the previous year because the grants typically are um, advertised after the finishing the period of admission in the master's, so by, by June, July. So people who have already been admitted then they can apply to the grants, okay? So we need to finish first all the period of applications. But just to give you a hint of what kind of grants we have, we distinguish them between grants and scholarships, okay? And here you have quite a, 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 a wide variety of, of, of grants. Typically, what companies ask you if you get a grant from the company after applying is that you do the internships at that company, okay? This is in the, in the small letters of the agreement that you have to do this internship with the company that is paying your, um, your grant. This is not always the case eh, because there are some non-profit organizations here that uh, they will not uh, force you to do the internship with them, but the companies, they typically do. So read the small letters as well when uh, applying to grants, okay? Just keep tuned with this link uh, to know more about the grant that we will be publishing by June, July. Okay, typically to be, uh, to apply during that period and then um, in September, October is when we see who, who takes the grants. As I said, uh, FIP participates in several consortiums and companies. These are our main partners that every year uh, contribute with grants. No? We have the consortiums from the masters, the two European masters, BDMA and EU for HPC, but then companies like Entity Data, Sedora, Devinta, and then 
<coughs> foundations, non-profit foundations like Nacho Navarro, Fibisiona, Fundacio Maso that also provide grants. Okay. <coughs> Another strong, a strong point of our master's research, and you have a, a unique opportunity to really deep into research while taking a master. Most of our lecturers are researchers, and it's easy that you can do a research stay with the research group. The research groups have real projects, and indeed one of the most interesting things that you may not be aware is that UPC is the leading institution in Europe raising H2020 funds. The H2020 funds are the flagship projects from the European Union where companies and universities work together in cutting edge technologies. Okay? So UPC is the leading uh, university raising funds in these aspects, right? And FIP, especially our uh, professors and lecturers, participate massively in these H2020 projects. Okay? So this is a, a unique opportunity to have participate in projects that are very much into research and innovation with, with very strong companies and in cutting edge topics, something very advanced. Eh? But we are not only leading in research in these kind of projects, we are also leading at the national level in the number of startups created from the, from the faculty, spin-offs and technology transfer. Okay, so if you saw the, um, um, for example, uh, these days the Mobile World Congress, when they were advising, uh, um, they were promoting a lot of uh, startups and things like that, many of them came from FIP, okay? So my advice is complement your thesis, uh, your master with added value tasks, okay? This can be mobility, working in a company if you are very much oriented to the professional market or doing research. But don't take a master like just taking the courses and that's it. Take your time to also add value to your CV, okay? And uh, for me, one of the things that you can do in this faculty in an easy way that it's very difficult to do in other uh, scenarios is doing research, okay? So um, you will see that during the, the lecturing, our uh, lecturers many times will ask you to read papers or we'll ask you to check uh, um, projects that are uh, happening right now to keep you up to date, no? So uh, you will also have a, 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 a small um, taste of what research is and innovation is in our, in our masters. What if I want to do a research stay with one of the research groups? Well, you can formalize it in two ways, with an internship, the same as I mentioned for the companies, it happens here, or with a research grant. We have a specifically research grants, also paid, okay, where you can formalize this collaboration with a research group. The good thing is that UPC is a, an engineering uh, university. We have research groups in absolutely whatever you can think of, okay? So we have in mathematics, business administration, computer architecture, physics, services and information system engineering, computer science, statistics and operational research, and systems engineering, automatic control, and industrial informatics. And if you want to see how many research groups we have here, you will see that I put here two different pages. All these are research groups, all of these, okay? These research groups have web pages that you can go there, get in contact with uh, the, the responsible people. Another way is through the lecturers that you will have in your courses, and then find out if they are looking for someone and so on and so forth. I didn't include here the Barcelona Supercomputing Center, but this is a center that is very much aligned with our masters. A big share of our students also end up in, in BSc. So BSc also is a good option to do research there. Okay. Just like I will keep this here because then later if you want to check the, the research groups, you will see that there is uh, options to do whatever you can think of. There is a research group here. Okay. And finally, but not least, services. Um, in this faculty, we are uh, highly aligned with um, equal opportunities and inclusion. We have offices in this aspect. So uh, it's important that you know that if uh, during the master or whatever you experience an ugly situation, you have the right to, to, um, to go to these offices and claim for the problem you may have, okay? We have a specific uh, services for bullying, gender equality, and the transgender community. And also, if someone has learning needs, uh, there is also the right to apply 
for a specific uh, learning path that the academic uh, responsible of the master will agree with you, okay? There is also psychological uh, orientation and teaching support in these cases. Another interesting thing is that solidarity and cooperation. We have a department, a, a group in, in, in the university that only uh, develops um, development and cooperation projects. Okay, so this is also another way to see the social perspective and how engineering can help in this aspect. We have uh, services for learning languages. You as a student, you have a lot of uh, opportunities to learn languages, uh, the third language or, or any other thing. Also cultural reception for students from abroad, okay? So there are uh, quite a lot of information, plus our libraries, a sports club of what uh, we call the UPC Arts. It's basically to train our technical students in humanities, okay? And this is a, a club just to develop this area as well. There is a link here to know more about these services. And then social life, also uh, don't forget that life is not only about working and studying, okay? So um, we have uh, the, the university life with plenty of associations from students that they run it and they do very interesting things. This is the associations of the, of the, of the faculty and they organize, some of them organize very uh, nice events as you may have heard of the Hack UPC, which is the largest uh, hackathon organized by students in Europe. And this happens in May and they are already advertising it. So this is a, an inter interesting experience, but also the Game Jam, for example, is organized by one of, one of our uh, uh, associations. Then the faculty is organizing events all the time, okay? So we participate in hackathons. We are pretty, um, uh, we are pretty active in promoting women in science and we do uh, participate in things like women in data science or top roses, but then several summer schools, uh, events that are allocated around our masters that uh, will add value to your day by day. These are these typical events are advertised in our website, you can enroll and participate in them and that's it, it's a, something specific, it's not a course or something like that. Okay. And then finishing before starting with your questions, uh, four questions that I typically receive. The first one is, uh, I still didn't finish my un uh, undergraduate studies, I'm still uh, taking my bachelor, can I apply to a master? And the answer is yes, okay. You can be admitted and the very hard, strict deadline to finish your bachelor is October. So typically, if you have something missing from your bachelor, you are allowed to start the master, okay? And then you need to provide the final certificate before October. Meanwhile, between September and October, you uh, have access to the campus and to the courses and everything just to allow you to continue the master, but there is a very strict deadline that by October you need to be finished, okay, with the bachelor. This is just to facilitate the transition between bachelor and master. Another important thing is that some of our masters have entry in September and some others have entry also in uh, February. It depends on the available seats. Typically, and this is important because it's a question that they get quite often, the master of data science and the master of artificial intelligence do not accept people in February, only in September. Okay. The second question, can I work and study at the same time? Absolutely. Okay, just take the master in part-time, formalize your um, work uh, as an internship or a work experience. If the master allows so, claim ECTS, elective ECTS for it, and that's it. So COVID-19 seems to be quite far away and hopefully nothing will uh, affect us again. So for next year, you can assume, and as we are assuming that uh, we are going to do like this year, fully back to 100% face-to-face -face lectures, okay? And this is also important because this is a university that is face-to-face. -face. We will facilitate for working people, like for example, the Industrial May, how to arrange the courses and so on. For example, Industrial May is only three afternoons from two to eight, okay? But still, you are required to attend face-to-face. -face. And then for new incoming students, because many of you are from abroad and are accepted in our master when you are in your home countries, you don't need to register by coming here face to face. Enrollment, the first enrollment is done online, okay? And enrollment after you are accepted in the master will do, this year will happen in July at some point. We don't have the date yet, but it will be the third week of July most probably. 
okay? So it means that whenever you are accepted, then you will get a slot to enroll. And typically in all the masters, the first semester is set because it's the mandatory courses and you take the courses that you need to take and that's it. The only question is if you want to do it part time at the moment of enrollment, you need to acknowledge that you are going to do the master part time. You will be asked about it and then you can only enroll 18 ECTS. If so, be sure to know which are the three courses more important to take. Okay, because there are courses that are prerequisite of other courses later in the master. So if you are going part time, talk to your uh, academic coordinator to know which courses are the more most relevant ones to take as part time. Okay, and that's it from my side. So now we will open the floor for questions. We will also enable the chat uh, from from uh, from the online session. If you have questions from the online session, please just write question or the question itself in the chat, and we will just give you the the the, the floor. And while you start uh, writing your questions, we will start with the people here face to face. If you have questions, please raise your hand and uh, Monse will bring the mic to you. Any question? So speak to the mic so they can hear you uh, online, okay? People who is not here. Which ba background do you need to do the master in data science? The master of data science basically can, can be several backgrounds are accepted. So you can be mathematics, a statistician, okay? Also physics is another usual background, computer science, but then any usual engineering uh, with a very strong first year of mathematics is also uh, acceptable, right? If you go to the admission of the master, you will see there what is the usual um, the usual backgrounds that we are accepting. But typically the thumb rule is that now there are a lot of bachelors that can be accepted because what we need is that you have a strong mathematical background and this can be done in many engineering bachelors and also some background in computer science. You don't need to be a computer scientist, but you need to be uh, have been exposed to some concepts in computer science. I've been told by another teacher here that um, bioinformaticians haven't been accepted yet uh, in uh, masters both from me and um, the AI masters. Uh, is that a good background for it? Like we use uh, computers, we do have um, concepts about AI and all these things, but I would like to know firsthand. Bioinformatics from uh, from which university do you come? It's STUPF. It's the only university that uh, does this course. In so, um, uh, if I understood well, so a lecturer told you that uh, they were not accepted. No, no, that they haven't been like there hasn't been any student from bioinformatics into these no, masters. Not really. Eh? So, in the in the master of data science, there are quite a few. I'm pretty sure about it. No, in but the master, I, in I, the master of artificial intelligence, I would say for sure I've seen at least uh, students from bioinformatics in the past. Uh, MIDI, I would say, it depends on the specialization. Okay, okay? but in general, uh, I think this is a, a bachelor that uh, gives you access to most of our masters. So um, I would not be concerned about it. The only thing is that. Most probably what the lecturer meant is that some of these masters, especially the one, the, the artificial intelligence and data science, they are pretty competitive. So then another thing is if we get a seat or not, but your bachelor is, is fine. More questions here in the room? Uh, you told about like professional experience, we can use that for uh, as a ECT points. So is it any like requirement that that work should be within Europe or something like this to, to show? The, the, yeah, uh, so the, the, typically the academic coordinator of the master checks the relevance of the working experience for the master. But just be aware that the working experience is considered elective ECTS. So it does not need to be 
strongly related with the master. It needs to be in the field of informatics. This is enough, typically. Yeah. What we don't accept is, I don't know, if you come here and say, okay, I've been, I don't know, a, a veterinarian during two years. Okay, <laughs> this is not considered relevant. But if you've been working in the computer science field in informatics, typically this working experience is accepted. Even, even if you work abroad, by abroad I mean even out of Europe. Uh -huh. um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, um, l can you pass us this question? Because I need to ask my administration sure. about this. But in principle, I would say that working experience, regardless of where you did it, but I cannot guarantee I'm right. So pass us the question to InfoMasters, please, and we will answer you specifically. Thank you. So my question is regarding the English language requirement. So is it necessary to submit uh, some uh, test results or can we prove it through our bachelor's degree? Like if we have done the bachelor's degree and the language of communication was English in our last degree? I think we accept the bachelor right now. Yeah, okay. if the bachelor was done in English, we accept this as a, as a proof. Okay, thank you. Any other question here in the room? I have a question of uh, legal uh, related to some legal procedure that I am working in Barcelona Supercomputing Center and I have completed one year there. So currently I have an EA card of two years. So if I enroll in one of your master's program, what will be my legal status? Will it be turned from uh, work from work to a student student uh, one or? Oh, about legal aspects, sorry, I cannot help you much here. There is an office at UPC that it's in international mobility. We can put you in contact with them. There is an office here that you can go face to face. It's called OMI, OMI. And uh, there are people there just to to help international students. I think it's the right, way, right place to go and ask them. They are very much into legal aspects. And if you explain your situation, they will let you know exactly uh, what you need to do. Um, if, if you cannot find the link online, just send an, an email to InfoMasters and we will put you in contact uh, with, the, with the website. They have a website and you can go face to face. There is an office here in the campus. Okay. Okay. Oh, one more question. You talked about the complementary courses. So when you will decide uh, that a student needs that complementary course or not? At acceptance time. When you get the answer, if you are accepted, they will tell you if you need to take courses or not. So at that moment. Yeah, uh, because uh, I have a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering with majors in computer sciences, but I haven't taken the course of uh, computer architecture in my bachelor's. But after my bachelor's, I have taken online course on computer architecture and my whole working experience of two to three years is related to that. So will that be counted? It depends on the master and the commission uh, evaluating. Which master are you thinking of? MIDI. Um, if you are working at BSC and you can prove that what you have done there, uh, maybe the commission will accept it as a enough background, but uh, here it depends a lot on the commission. You just, when you do the application, explain all what you did in this aspect with this regard, acknowledge this gap in your, in your uh, motivation letter and explain all what you did. And then uh, they will decide if this is enough or not. Okay. It's difficult without all the details to, to decide if this is enough or not. Okay. okay, thank you. Any other question here in the room? Uh, if I understood well, if you want to take the master part-time, in the case of May, you have five semesters. In the case of May, you have five semesters. Five and semesters. you have to apply for 18 uh, credits each semester. Yes, with the exception of the master thesis, that you are supposed to take it all together in one semester because it's supposed to be done in the company. So the master thesis, 30 CTS, is taken as a whole in one semester. So you do 18 ECTS when taking courses. Okay. But then in one semester, you will do 30 CTS, which is the master thesis. But the thesis has to be done inside the five semesters. Yes. Okay. And typically it's done in a company. That's why it's, it's feasible to do it in one semester. Any other question? Yeah, there. Uh, related to enrollment, so uh, I hope we don't require legalized document to submit for pre-enrollment. Uh, 
legalized? You mean stamped and all this? Yeah, I, if you are coming <coughs> from a foreigner company. No, I think uh, what country. what we need. So for the for the pre-enrollment, you need digital copies are fine. Then if if the administration requires any other document like legalized and stamped and so on, it's enough to do it at the enrollment time, and it's allowed to bring it because, for example, imagine you are not in Barcelona at the enrollment time, no, mm -hmm. and you do the enrollment online. So it's fine you bring it at the beginning of the lectures. So the first week of lectures in September, you can bring the documents that are missing or the legalized ones. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. The, the, the administration will be in contact with you and they will tell you exactly what you need to bring and when, so don't worry about that. Okay. More questions in the room? Uh, so it's about the fee structure. So you uh, divide it into two categories, non-Europeans and from the Europeans. But if we, if we are here in Spain on a, let's say a work permit, we have a resident status here. So which category would- Oof, would I don't I know. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, if you have residence permit, I would say you are European. Okay. But uh, send us the email because I, when I'm not fully sure, I prefer you send us an email so we can sure. let you know exactly the answer. Sure. Uh, and the other thing is about the uh, bachelor's degree. So our bachelor, my bachelor's degree is uh, scaled on a zero to four scale. So do I have to submit an equivalence degree at the time of pre-enrollment or? Wh one of the things that they ask you is that the, the transcripts have marks. And then uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, one of the documents is that you transform it to a zero to 10 scale. But there is a document to do this if I'm not wrong, right? Okay. Yes. At the time of pre-enrollment. Pre-enrollment, mm -hmm. yes, because this is needed for the evaluation in the commission that will evaluate your application. Thank you. More questions in the room? Yes, uh, regarding the English certificate, uh, does this certificate needs to be shown um, on the enrollment? And if that's it, Moreover, if we, although we don't have the first certificate in English, um, I've done particularly some subjects in the here at, at FIP in English, and also my undergraduate thesis is in English. I don't know if this is will be sufficient to, to show the level, or in my case, I will need to uh, do the test for the first certificate in English. So um, if the bachelor is completely in English, I know this is enough. If you only took some courses on the thesis, I don't know. I don't know. I would say no, eh? I don't think it's enough. So you would need to take a test. Okay, and this is done then on the enro enrollment, right? In the, in the pre-enrollment. Oh, so okay. So you, need okay. you have till the end of May to show this certificate. Okay, thanks. Any other question from the room? You better think it wisely because we have a lot online. So <laughs> if you need to wait till we are done there, <laughs> it will take a while. Eh? No more questions? OK, let's just start with the questions from the chat. Um, I will go in order, OK? So the first one, Esteban is asking, does May FIP guarantee to be assigned an internship for an external company? So Esteban, we, we don't. Uh, we don't assign people to, to external companies. What we do is typically we, we advertise the, the, the offers that the companies do for doing internships. There is a, a website with a varsity of, of options that the students can go there and apply on their own. So uh, in this website, companies publish their offers and the students decide to apply or not. But in general, I would not be concerned about getting internships or not in any of the masters. Eh? So if you are willing to get an internship and uh, either through our bursary or just uh, looking for your own, there will be no issues in finding companies where to do internships. This is pretty, pretty usual, as I said. Um, uh, our students find jobs very quickly and before they find, finalize the master. Eh? So don't, don't worry about that at all. So Mateja is asking on your website, it says there are different master fees for students with qualifying master degrees and with no qualifying master degree. What do this qualifying master degree mean? Well, this is a, a <coughs> an internal thing that um, some of the engineering schools here in the past, they 
forced students to finish these uh, studies to be able to work on that field. For example, architecture, building architectures, I mean, building um, architecture of buildings, or um, I don't know, uh, telecommunications, right? But then in, in informatics, unfortunately, we don't have this, no? Uh, we don't have this ability. So all our masters are not habilitant, so no qualifying master's degrees, okay, all of them. Adria is asking, is my fit for a person with a mathematics bachelor? Yes, of course, yes. Andres Mauricio, Andres Mauricio Osorio Rizabaleta is asking, is economics bachelor acceptable for data science master? It depends on your economics bachelor. So <coughs> economics is, is borderline for the data science master. Um, there are some economics bachelors in some universities that they have quite a strong mathematical background and computer science and then could be acceptable. It depends a lot on the syllabus, the courses you took. And uh, depending on, on the courses, uh, the commission will, will decide if it is acceptable or not. Pekal Meida is asking, are the master's degree titulo propio or titulo oficial? All our masters are titulos oficiales. So all of them have been verified by the ministry and, uh, and they meet all the official requirements. Matteo Balduccio is asking, can you start doing a fully dedicated master and then change to part-time model? Yes, that's, that's fine, but you need to inform because the first time you enroll in any of our masters, the first time, the system asks if you want to do it part-time or full-time. So you make a decision at that moment. If you want to change this decision later, cannot be done through the, the enrollment application, you need to contact our administration for the change. Okay, but yes, it's possible. David Ferre is asking, I'm interested in the Master of Data Science. I currently do not have a B2 degree in English, but at my university, they give us an exit English level test. In case I get B2 in this test is considered equivalent to B2 degree. I would say that we accept most uh, exams that they are official. So if it's from a university, I think it should be fine. But maybe uh, we should check. Yeah. Um, uh, David, can you send us an email so we can be sure to answer your question properly, you know, just in case I'm not fully right. The email is this one here in the slide, info.masters. You can write there and we will double check just to be sure we are not saying something wrong, okay? Unai is asking, good afternoon, is it possible to combine some elective courses from different masters? For example, could I choose the master's degree in artificial intelligence but opt for the elective courses in bioinformatics from the data science master? Yes, but carefully, <laughs> because um, the problem is that uh, the Master of Data Science and the Master of Artificial Intelligence, they, f f um, they are always full. So it means that the, the students from the Master have priority for these courses. So you only have, uh, you will only be able to take a, a course from another Master if there are available seats after the enrollment of the local students, the, local, the students uh, from that Master, okay? In general, as a vice dean, I can tell you that I'm promoting that the students can move for the electives between uh, courses from different masters, but I can also tell you that, that there are courses that are very much demanded, so this is not always possible. It depends on the course. Huh? But in principle, yes, there is the, the option. Julian is asking how many applicants for MDS were there in 2022. I don't know the number exactly. Uh, but uh, we accepted 40 students and the number of applications were, I don't know, I don't know. I cannot tell you an, a number, Julian. I cannot really, sorry, I don't know it by heart. <coughs> the next one, Lan Gonzalez is asking, which are the minimum grades for accessing the masters? There is no minimum grade, well, passing mark, okay? So you need to, to pass the bachelor, that's for sure. It depends a lot on the master. I mean, there are masters that are very competitive uh, and masters that are less competitive to get in. But this is a good question to, to raise a point here. Eh? Uh, many times, uh, some of you think that the, the, the grade from the bachelor is the most important thing, and it's important, I will not deny it. Okay, so we check the marks. But we check many other things, like for example, what I said, what, uh, what is uh, special or specific from your, your, um, from your curriculum? What is your motivation? Just try to motivate well um, why you want to take the master, what is different from your profile to the others, 
what is the value that the, the, the people who will be taking the master with you will get from you, no? Because in the end, what we want is a diverse, um, a diverse cohort. So, because if the cohort is diverse, you learn from each other, okay? So, uh, it's not only marks that we are checking. So, take seriously the, the motivation later, letter and uh, motivating why you want to take the master. And, of course, the grade has a, a, an impact. Eh? I will not deny this, but it's not the only thing we check. In the admission of each master, you will see the percentages we assign to different aspects, okay? So, you can get an idea. Uh, depending on the master you want to take, how important they are. But I can tell you in all of them, there are other factors than just the mark. Uh, Ezequiel is asking, why is mandatory to assist two lectures in Tarragona for the A master? How strict is this? If we are currently working, it's kind of difficult to fulfill this requirement. I, I know, but this is how it is. This master was created as an inter-universitary master. So it means that it's not given only by UPC, also by UB and URB. And some of the mandatory courses take place in URB. So um, for sure, the first semester, you need to go to Tarragona at least once per week. In the second semester, I'm not sure, but maybe you can skip it. But uh, for sure, at least the first semester, you need to go. Okay, it's, it's mandatory because this is how the, the, the master was verified. This is verified by the Spanish ministry and each university is participating with a share and we need to honor it, we cannot change it. Then we have, are all elective courses in MAI done or do they need a minimum enrollment of students to be done? Oh, um, MAI needs, uh, like in all, in all our masters, you need a minimum number of students to enroll. The problem is that our masters are typically so full that uh, we don't close uh, courses. Eh? So um, typically all the courses are, are, are done. The problem is the other way around. The, other, the problem is that there are some courses that are very much demanded and not everybody can take it. Eh? So this is the, the problem. But I would not get much concerned that your favorite course is not going to be offered. Eh? Joan Frasas is asking, is there any access preference for UPC, UPC students? Well, <laughs> uh, in principle, the, the evaluation criteria is in the, the admission criteria, obviously. One of the things that we evaluate is that uh, the bachelor is strong and uh, UPC students are well prepared and the bachelors are strong. So this is a, a quality evidence that we are considering. Uh, Nicolas is asking, good afternoon about May. What is the level necessary of Catalan for the master? So to enter the master, you only need to access with, uh, with a Spanish certificate, it's fine. Or if you are native speaker. The only thing is that there are some courses in May, at least that I can think now by heart, there are two mandatory courses that are in Catalan. So it means that um, you may need to take uh, some, some basic Catalan course to follow that. There are students that do not take any course eh, and just go directly to the Catalan lectures and they are fine because I mean, if you are a native Spanish speaker, understanding Catalan is not that difficult. And in general, this is not a problem. But I would say that maybe you need to take, what I would suggest is you take a very small course of few hours, a few weeks, uh, just to learn the basics. Uh, UPC uh, has basic courses in Catalan for the students and also has a very nice tool that appeared this year, that it's a tool to help you understand the basic of Catalan at your own pace. It's like uh, one of these... It's not like Duolingo. I don't know if I can say Duolingo. Well, anyway, so uh, it's 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 a kind of um, tool that helps you uh, learn languages. It's not only for Catalan. This tool is available for all the students if they want to learn other languages, like uh, students who came to take a master in English and they want to learn Spanish or Catalan, or our students uh, that want to learn English. It's a nice tool that it's available for all UPC students, and this should not be a problem. Kumar is asking, in Spain, GPAs are calculated on a scale between 5 to 10. Do we need to convert our GPAs to this uh, 5 to uh, 5 10 scale? So when you do the pre-enrollment, you need to do the, 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 the maths, and you need to do the translation, but there are instructions how to do it, and you need to convert yeah, to, the, to the 5 to 10 scale. Well, indeed, it's from 0 to 10, but you're right, the passing is 5. This is done in the pre-enrollment, and, 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 and this is something that you are guided. If you have problems, we can help you to, to give you some instructions how to do the, the transformation. 
David Estelle is asking, I have 20, experience, 20 years experience in IT as developer, but my degree is in environmental sciences. Would it be a problem to join my? Also, I do speak English in the main language at work, and I've been living abroad in Ireland for a while. I don't have a language certificate, nor I will be able to get it in the next five days. Will it be a problem for the pre-enrollment? Um, living abroad, or I think that this is not considered. Um, you will need uh, the certificate, I'm afraid. Eh? But you have till May to apply uh, to, to my. So uh, till the 26th of May, you have you are on time. So just take take a, one of these online uh, um, certificates with what you are explaining. You should not have any problem to get the the, the certificate, and then uh, you are fine. About the other part of your question, if these years of experience are accounted, yes, they are. Uh, so, um, so if you you have a long experience, especially in in, the, in that industry, in IT or research or related aspects, this is something that typically the commission may consider, and and this is fine. Especially the master in artificial intelligence, they are quite keen on accepting diverse profiles. So, I think it should not be a problem, David. And Nicolas is asking, it's okay to apply for MIDI even if I have not finished my degree studies yet. I'm currently on my last uh, sorry, on my last semester, so I basically only have to submit my end of degree project around June and I'm graduated from university. Also, is there any site that hosts the list of the admitted students of MIDI from previous years? So the first question, uh, you don't need to finish to pre-enroll. And to get accepted, this will be a conditional acceptance. And then in September, if you... If you are done in June, you are fine because by June it means that for the enrollment in July you will be done and everything will f be fine. But as I explained in the presentation, it's even possible to finish in October the bachelor and still be accepted. If you um, finish in October, in September you will be uh, accepted in the in the masters, and you will be get it access to the masters uh, courses. But you need to to bring the the, the final degree uh, degree and uh, title in in October, and then as soon as you do this, you are safe and fine. If you don't finish by October and you don't bring the certificate, you will be uh, expelled from the master. Okay, but you have till October to finish. So with the dates that you are putting, it's not a problem. Uh, we cannot disclose, I think, the names of students uh, openly. I, I don't think this is uh, compliant with the GDPR, eh? so I don't think we, we can open this kind of information, and for sure it's not online. Eh? Um, another question for me, if I have done a full year Erasmus in English, it's enough to, to prove English level. As I said, bachelor com complete bachelor in English is fine. Only one year on some courses, I think it's not. Anyhow, just to be fully sure, send the, the, your question to InfoMasters and we will be able to, to answer your question. Okay. Uh, David is asking, does the Masters in Data Science enable you to practice the profession? Yes, of course. Um, you, you can be sure that the Data Science Master is pretty well uh, detailed and, and it's, a data, it's a master that has been uh, awarded uh, several uh, um, several co um, appraisals so uh, our master of data science is fully fully right to to be a data scientist later so don't worry about that david garcia is asking it's necessary that the english certificate has been obtained within the last two years or something similar yes right two years two years, two years yes Esteban Calvache is asking for foreign students, do the laws allow me to do an internship? Yes, uh, no, because when you are in a, a student, when you are doing the internship, you don't have a working permit. You are a student that doing a, doing an internship, which is different. Eh? So with your visa as a student is enough to do the internship. But uh, you, you are not allowed to work, but you are allowed to do an internship as part of your studies. Jaroslav is asking, as far as I understand, there are no CS master programs that fit that would support remote only face-to-face -face. yes all our masters are face-to-face -face. we we don't have um, um, remote programs Jordi Serra is asking I did a postdoc in, Swe in Sweden where the main language was English uh, I lived there for almost three years it's enough for the English but a postdoc is not a degree eh? so again I'm not sure this is enough um, could you please send us an email to InfoMasters and we'll let you know. But in any case, like I said before, with all this background, uh, you could take any online uh, certificate and you should be fine to have it uh, by the end of May for sure, okay? 
the next question uh, hello thanks for the presentation presentation you're welcome my query is regarding a study with work which essentially is part-time master if i understood correctly we need to attend classes face to face three days in a week no this is for may eh? be careful may is the only one that uh, condense put all the lectures in only three days the other masters do not guarantee this may is the only one with the industrial um, version that we uh, condense all the lectures in only three, di three days from two to eight but all the other masters you can do it part-time but this is not guaranteed what i would suggest if you are thinking of any of the other masters to do it part-time is that you go to the web uh, that will be in the link and check the timetables you will see when the courses take place and so on and so forth uh, what i can say is that um, our masters are either taken in the morning or in the afternoon okay so the master of data science for example is in the afternoon my is in the morning um, midi is basically in the morning as well and may is in the afternoon so um, they are already thought in a way that you have the other half of the day to to do the the the, the work at uh, the time at work in your in your job but um, specifically what you are right written here it's only guaranteed for may okay so be careful with that so following your question in that situation we would need to reduce our time allocation in the company from existing yes it's part-time also for the company yes so we would get some assistance from universities to get an agreement for our current employers for that well not really so here it depends on you and if your current employee uh, allows you to take masters no here the faculty cannot uh, cannot say much i mean we will facilitate people can do part-time but uh, then uh, we, we cannot convince your employer right this is up to them to decide if this is interesting or not Sinri is asking do you have any recommendation as to, as to where to get english spanish certificates <clears throat> for the english you have a lot of options now and now uh, toffel i think they have this internet uh, test that is quite convenient if you don't want to uh, sign for a face-to-face -face exam uh, but any official um, exam will be acceptable if you are thinking of the um, of our english uh, masters you don't need to provide an spanish certificate eh? a spanish certificate is only for may if you want to take may uh, then you need to provide an spanish certificate and again uh, um, i don't know the the institute cervantes for example is a place that i know that they take spanish uh, certificates but any other official one should be fair um julian is asking you have mentioned that in the process of application diversity is important yes it is what kind of diversity are you looking for specifically unique academic background or something else any kind of diversity no so um, so diversity came in many flavors so from an academic point of view for sure for example in in some of our masters in media is more difficult because media is very much um uh researching in a very certain aspect so their academically students are quite homogeneous right but in masters like the master of data science of the master of artificial intelligence what i mean is that we are putting in the same room people coming from physics with mathematics statistics civil engineering telecommunications computer science and this diversity adds value to, to the master because we have a very uh, varied uh, cohort but we also account for example one of the things that we strive in our masters is to get a uh, gender balance in the admission this is something that we are trying to go for and also diversity in the nationality and the cultural so diversity came in many flavors and all of them are considered mateo is asking my english certificate has more than three years but i currently work in a company using uh, but working in a company or living in a place is not enough uh, you will need to renew the certificate i'm afraid so but you are you, you are have plenty of time eh? till uh, 26th of may you can still apply to our masters Stefan is asking could you repeat the time schedule for may may is in the afternoon may lectures at from 2 p.m to 8 p.m three days uh, per week if you take may industrial may and if it's a regular may it still is in the afternoon but then uh, for five days Kumar is asking thanks um, you mentioned that we can get help in converting to our GPA where we can find that information when you submit your pre-enrollment uh, there is a person that gets in contact with you 
because they validate your your application and at that moment if uh, they see that uh, there is something wrong that they will contact you and and get information otherwise if you don't know how to start and you really need uh, help from a start write to info masters and then they will uh, they will help you how to or guide you how to do this Oscar Santillana is asking, I've already done the pre-admission request for my. Today I have learned that any English certificates need to be up to ye two years old, but my certificate is older. Any guidance how to proceed? Current status of admission is validada. Um, I guess that at some point they will contact you and let you know that um, you will need to, to, to renew your certificate. Don't worry that um, the, the, the administration will be in contact with you and will be informing you. Peck Almeida, economic bachelor is accepted in AI master. Uh, the AI master is less restrictive than the MDS. So I think that in, in AI, that might be considered. Okay. Again, it, it depends a lot. When, you, when we go to bachelors that are a bit far away from engineering, um, it depends a lot on the courses that you took and the syllabus of the courses. So it's important that you also show or prove that your courses uh, are strong from mathematical perspective and computer science, because this is in the end what our masters need, right? Uh, Julian is asking if your grades are already in a five to 10 scale, is it necessary to convert? No, so you're fine. Also, it's necessary to provide course descriptions for every course. Um, I would do so only if your bachelor is uh, not clearly in computer science, mathematics, or, or in one of the expected um, bachelors for the master you are taking, then yes, because it's a way to prove that uh, you are covering the, the, the prerequisites uh, that they are expecting. Go to the admission uh, um, website of, of, the, of the master that you want to apply and check there is... Um, what are the things that they are considering, the background that they are, they are considering for applicants? If you feel that your bachelor doesn't feel it, then it's important that you do this thing that you are mentioning, just to provide the course descriptions, uh, to give evidences to the commission that you are a set or not, okay? And with this, we are done with questions. I don't know if there is any other question. You're welcome, Julian. And here, the ones remaining. <laughs> Mateja has another question. I just found out about the English degree having to be less than two years. My bachelor's program is completely in English. Y yes, I think that you can put comments in your admission. Uh, otherwise, just contact them and let them know. Okay. But I would say you can put comments in your application. Eh? You can add a comment in your application. And that's it. Uh, plenty of questions, that's good. Are you all done, set here? Yes. Okay, so thank you everybody. Um, and thank you for your questions, which are always helpful, not only for you, but for the others. And thank you for being participative. We do hope that it was interesting for all of you. And please do not hesitate to contact us in InfoMasters if you have further questions. Also remember that this session was recorded and we will make them make it available in the website and uh, nothing else. Thank you very much and hopefully see you as UPC, UPC students next year. See you all. Bye.